My bubbles. He likes bubbles. Okay, we're looking back at rudders again. Sorry to bore you with more rudder stuff, but um, we got to see some really, really cool stuff the other day. Uh, sailing upwind in 14 to 16 knots of wind, and we had, there it is, bubbles. Lots and lots of bubbles come and attack our rudder so I thought we'd try and get some video of it and amazingly enough I, I, I'm lost for words at how cool this footage is as a, a designer that spends so much time trying to get the criteria correct for how to design rudders this is just absolute gold for me there's so much going on here right now that I just I can't even tell you how excited I am. It's just... Look at it, it's bubbles! There's so much information in just that last 20 seconds that we just saw that, you know, you, you, you can't get from 20 years of, of crunching numbers. Uh, very, very exciting stuff. Now, let's have a look at the design side of this project. This is a thing that's taken a bar done of my time up. Um, I'm going to make this video uh, a bit shorter than the last video I just made. So I made a full in-depth uh, video about the whole design process and it's too long. And Anna said I have to make it shorter. So I'm making a short version. But if you want to see the full in-depth version about the whole design process, um, we have our website, which has got lots and lots of uh, groovy details about this and Heaps of other stuff. Yeah. If you want a heap of resources, uh, go and check out our website. Um, right, so what did I do? First of all, I designed a aerofoil section for our rudders. Why did I do that? Because I had data. I have a lot of recorded data. As you guys know in previous videos, you would have seen that I, must, I just love recording data. The reason I love recording data is that it makes this job a lot easier. Uh, why does it make it easier? Because the parameters for this foil are defined. I, I know from historical data what the rudder sees speed-wise, angle-wise, blah, 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 blah. So I designed a new aerofoil section for our rudder. Um, I had uh, other aerofoil sections like the Epla E836 aerofoil as a reference. I had the NACA... 63012, which is another laminar flow one, which is a, a bad rudder section. So I use it as a, a guide as to where not to go uh, with the design. Uh, and of course, the most famous NACA 0012 rudder section. And you'll actually see that the rudder section that I ended up with is very close to the NACA 0012 with some small tweaks to make it faster. Um, and fit the slightly smaller tolerance zones that I know we'll, we'll have. So just because I had the historical data. So here you can see I designed a new aerofoil section in the 2D realm. Um, I then went and I checked out to make sure that that 2D aerofoil would perform like I wanted it to. So you know, made lots of graphs and squiggly lines and data and um, heaps, but tons of info here um, and very important info and a lot of very fine characteristics between the different aerofoils, which ones are more suited and less suited uh, for the different jobs get spat out here. So I um, spent a lot of time getting the aerofoil shapes right. And then I move into then designing it as a um, 
3D uh, rudder and analyzing it as a 3D rudder. And the reason why we analyze it as a 3D rudder uh, beyond the 2D aerofoil section is that the um, ends of the aerofoil influences, there are influences things like um, aspect ratio, taper ratios, tip shapes, um, uh, load distributions. So everyone talks about the elliptical wing. Um, the elliptical wing and uh, all of that is so misinterpreted. It's actually an elliptical wing loading, not an elliptical wing uh, that we're looking for. Um, so that's why rudders and wings that are rectangular or just tapered actually are as efficient as an elliptical one because you don't it's, it's not actually the plan form that has to be elliptical it's the wing loading that needs to be elliptical but anyway i'm off course again um so yeah so i can check out those things i can check the lift line and where it sits in the rudder blade um the moments and all the rest of it um so i actually check out more graphs more lines more squiggly things more pretty pictures um I oh, want press that one, um, and I look at critical um, things like the lift drag ratios um, between different rudders. So here you can see I modelled the the rudder, the original rudder that was designed with the boat by Lock Crowther. So that's the brownie goldy lines here. That's the performances of the original rudder that was designed with the boat. Here the purple ones. That's the, the, the rudder that we actually built in uh, Valencia. You know, I had all the geometries and the sections, blah, 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 blah. Um, so I could model it. Then I designed the new ones. And with the new ones, you can see we've stepped up a little bit. So that's the red and the yellow lines here that we got more efficient. And the big difference between the yellow and the red lines are, I know people are going to ask me about this, uh, is... Here's the new rudder I've designed. Here's the original design that Lock Crowther did. Here's the Valencia rudder. And here is the new rudder with wing tips on it. Now I'm going to touch on a little bit um, why I won't be going with wing tips to start with, but I will have um, the inserts in the bottom of the rudder so that I can put them on. Right, so here we go. I'm going to have a quick look here at this chart. You can see the yellow line is the rudder with wing tips, and it looks good because it's like, man, you know, up here, more is better. Red down here, not as much as the yellow, so the yellow's got to be better. Um, well, that is the case if we are working in angle of attack areas around here. I spent a heap of time collecting data at the angles of attack that the previous rudders sat at and it's lower than this five degree uh, angle of attack so our rudders don't actually see five degrees that often um, whereas we see that two to three degree angle of attack a lot and you can see here that actually the red lines are more efficient than the yellow lines so that means winglets are not as efficient for our boat in this case uh, but there are other trade-offs that I've got to consider like reduced pitching etc 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 but I'm gonna have a look at another graph here that sort of shows this crossover that I was talking about where uh, the the rudder with the least drag so this is a, a drag in Newtons so the lower the line the less drag it has and here we've got the angle of attacks here, so 4 degrees, 6 degrees angle of attack. And you can see here that the red line is the new rudder without the wings, and the yellow line, again, is the rudder without, with the wings. And you can see this crossover here at 6 degrees. This is when the yellow line, the rudder with wings, becomes more efficient than the rudder without wings. Um, and here at the speeds that we operate the boat at most of the time the crossover is actually a little bit lower 
it's uh, in the region of three or four degrees. So the wing dips, you know, it could be, you know, yeah. But it, it's just, it's a lot of hassle for not a lot of gain. There is potential more uh, bigger gains in reducing pitching. Um, but yeah, this is uh, at the moment the reason why I won't immediately be going into uh, full blown winglet mode. But there will be um, on the bottom of the rudder the ability to put the wings on when I can get round to them. Uh, so yeah, anyway, that's designing the rudder and looking at the hydrodynamic side of things. Um, let's have a look at some pretty pictures actually. If we go to five meters a second, a quick little analysis here. Close. Yeah, anyway. Here we can see more pretty pictures. Uh, turn the... Ooh. Surfaces off. So we can see some coefficients. Let's look at five degrees. Our pressure coefficients will go up. Look at some streams. So you can see here that I can model things like the lift line and see where they are. Um, I can look at the streams. Where are the streams? There we go. Haha, <laughs> there's some streams. So I'm just going to have to cut that out. So here we can see, um, we can model um, streams. So I can see that there's vortices at the ends on the tips. I've got vortices at the top here. You'll see there's two rudders. Uh, modeled side by side. Now, do this is very important to get the right end conditions um, on the foil, and you can see there's gaps here to model the gaps between the rudders and the hulls, and yeah, everything's sort of as accurate as we possibly can do it. Um, I also look at things like where the lift line is through the different angles of attack, so I can get the balance on the rudder and place the stock in the correct place to get the right. Um, feel on the rudder, etc, etc. Anyway, so that's the design side, uh, hydrodynamically. But now, once I've hydrodynamically looked at the uh, new rudder and new rudder design, I move into a uh, different program. Uh, and that program looks at uh, the 3D modeling side of things, where we start creating drawings and um, designing for what we've actually got. So I've modeled uh, the existing bearings I have in the boat. Um, I've modeled the uh, blade that I'm going to build uh, based on the hydrodynamics that I've done. Um, this could be CNC cut, but unfortunately I've got to hand cut it because I'm in the islands. Um, I've modeled the carbon stock that um, has to be built and is being built and has actually just been finished being built at SeaTech in New Zealand. Um, other things like the uh, bearings, <coughs> there's stainless steel shells to go over the stocks um, so that when I up future, I'm future proofing the, the rudder so that when we upgrade the boat to having uh, some nice Jeffa roller bearings, self-aligning roller bearings. I can replace the um, solid uh, nylon bearings with the uh, Jeffa roller bearings and we get um, nice fancy smooth feeling bearings on the boat. Uh, but in the meantime I use my old ones. So here you know everything's 3D modeled and making sure that it will work. <clears throat> it will be able to get fit together. Um, it will fit with the existing boat, the existing boat geometries etc 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 and is ready for me to build and from this I can create the drawings and it's really important to create the drawings so that people know what to build including myself um, so here you can see the drawings that I had actually sent off to um, SeaTech the drawings uh, have the geometry for the blades and the stocks um, lots of sections, so you know, I draw triangles and circles all day. Here I run a triangle, and here's a circle. Uh, it's my day job drawing, drawing triangles and circles. Oh, there's a square up here. And anyway, this drawing shows the geometry that's required for CTEC to build, the laminates they got to use, and the orientations of the carbon, etc., 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 and other little details like the um, 
stainless steel shells that get glued on and how the machinist has to machine them so when it gets glued on they don't rotate and they don't slip off etc etc so there's a quick little overview of the designing uh, part of the the rudders and what we went through to go through it if you want to see the full-blown version um, on the website uh, we have the um, heaps more uh, in-depth videos on on bits like this and you can learn a lot about the whole design process 